and all of these elements turn this guy into like a tragic hero um, where, you know, we now understand more about him as gamers, like as we're playing through his life and his story, and as we use him in our video game, we now have a better understanding of kind of what his motivation is. Um, and that changes the way you, I don't think it changes the way you play, but I think it changes the way you feel. So yeah, we're going to, that's right, Bannon's Castle. First of all, that's not Bannon's Castle. Second of all, welcome to the next installment of Final Fantasy VI gameplay. <coughs> I am Marco in Orlando, and hit that subscribe button if you are a gamer and if you like video games. Uh, right now, we are playing through Final Fantasy VI, which I consider the best role-playing game of all time, probably the best game of all time. And uh, right now, we are at, not Bannon's, like I said, Edgar's Castle, and we are checking out... Um, how we can find Terra, who flew off as she just discovered her Esper uh, personality. So um, we're going to be playing through, and I'm going to be providing some commentary during the game play. And if you, you'll notice there's some jump edits and, and jump cuts. Um, so I, I, I narrow this down. This is about a half hour of gameplay, down to about 18 minutes. Um, just wanted to do a little, a little different structure this time, where I'm just going to put some commentary over it as I'm playing. And, and you know provide a little more information about the game so uh, for now let me kind of let me send it back to me from the day when playing mm, we just bought him out that's good he can retire now I'm kind of learning as I go and that's okay you notice that I just said um, I'm learning as I, I go and that's okay uh, I think some of you if you've seen my previous installments I've had some issues when it comes to uh, figuring out the audio and, and really getting the stream in good shape, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. And I feel like very soon um, I will probably for the, for the rest of the game I'm gonna have some pretty good streams as far as audio quality and and all that. So um, but right now we're gonna I'm gonna again send it back to me before um, this is a big moment when Sabin and Edgar kind of have a little bit of a moment and you learn more about their story and that's one of the biggest moments of this installment is kind of learning more about these two these brothers and uh, so let's get back to that story here briefly and yet it's different mom and dad are gone nothing can never really be the same not after what happened oh intrigue 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 man this sucks Tonight, worse he's been, so if he should. No, you're wrong, it's not true. The king, he's. <clears throat> Alright, broken record time. This is here, what I'm hearing is very much dad couldn't have. Um, yeah, it's very much uh, storytelling that I used to be talking about. They start to make you realize, you know, these people, or they start to think about these people as humans, right? Um, like this guy's losing his father, and so that's, you're going to see that's why he leaves. Dad didn't make it. Edgar, there you are. Your father just said he wouldn't trust figure out to the two of you. Those were his final words. You all make me sick. Everyone's saying that the Empire had dad poisoned. And the only thing any of you can think about is who will be the next king. No one's even sad. None of you probably cared when mom died after we were born either. Oh snap. See, don't be a dick, dude. That's not... Empire murderers, they won't get away with us. 
and you start to kind of fill in the blanks of why they want to why he's part of this battle right priestess leave us so yeah so this is part of the storytelling that i've been talking about through this whole playthrough and it really was one of the things that one of the things that drives my passion for this game uh, you have this brotherly relationship between these two that are uh, very close obviously but also they had this they, they have the falling apart and the great thing about this is early in the game when you meet Sabin and Edgar you realize they're, they're completely different people and you almost wonder why they're how they're they got so different and you know why they were you know one of them was in the wild and the other one was you know in this this very civilized society castle type um, structure and so the, the great thing about this game is that it sets you up with these these playthroughs it sets you up with these personalities and these um, attitudes of who these people are but it doesn't leave you hanging eventually you, you figure out what leads these people to become who and how they are um, and we're gonna see that with Locke later in the same clip a little bit more about his backstory and what actually Marco in the gameplay um, but so that, that's what more, another thing that, that this game makes this game what it was what it is right so um, again we'll get back and, and uh, enjoy the rest of this scene already been 10 years that little shrimp has grown into a whopping lobster and you a king crab. <laughs> Do you think dad will be proud of me? Don't you ever doubt that. I'm sure he's beaming with pride wherever he is. Ten years. Where has the time gone? It's true. True that, buddy. True that. Here's to a couple of confused grown-ups. Drink. Here's to dad. Huzzah. To mom and to Figaro. Give him a hug, baby. Give him a hug. Brother's hug. King showers his attention on women, young, old, pretty, or plain. No one is safe. <laughs> oh, King Edgar. Who'd have thought we'd see the day when a human flew over a mountain range? Unbelievable, isn't it? She weren't no human, young lady. I think what this does right here is uh, really illustrate just how masterful it was to kind of, uh, you know, develop these people's stories as they grow and just have them grow but also incorporate the sci-fi supernatural elements when Terra um, you know went crazy and, and started uh, you know, going back and you'll, 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 figure, you'll discover later that she's back into like her old form which is good uh, so to see her when she flew off that was like the first illustration um, uh, of seeing her as she really is and frankly for the rest of the game you then see her like that you see her as this different kind of person but again later later on you'll see they they reintegrate her too into the story and it's so masterfully done and um again another reason that this game is so so beautiful really in all of its uh, components Here we go. Lots of requests this month. I can take you to these the desert beyond the mountains if you'd like. Another element here that you're about to see and you're, you're noticing it as I talk. This is just phenomenal. Um, you know, when you are in a role playing game and you see these maps and you kind of, you know, you, you kind of look forward and you see kind of uh, different parts of the world. And how are you going to get there? How are you going to make it? Um, you know, the trench was one of the serpent's trench was one of the ways we did that to get to a different place and then the phantom train um that you know the, the forest so to see like to have them turn this entire castle into 
uh, a vehicle um, was again really cool to see um, and just a new element right a new element that you didn't see so so now we are in a different part of the world and we have our four heroes who are going to try to rescue Terra um, and Locke slash Marco um, is about to go to one of his early life homes and uh, some some pretty cool stuff happens here and we'll kind of like just watch and see it unfold. It came here and everyone else was afraid of it but I liked it. The pretty light was Terra. Was that thing really a monster? It stopped right in front of my little girl and I could see it had gentle eyes. Pub or the end. First this guy. A strange glowing creature flew through here, scared the living daylights out of me. It took off southward towards your door. Ooh, there we go. My young brother's a bit eccentric. Lives alone up north. Says he's going to build a coliseum or some such nonsense. Yeah, he is. That thing. I don't know what it was, but it tore up my house. Some kind of glowing monster. Oh, Marco, is that you? Have you stopped by Rachel's house? No. I want to point out to to you exactly what's happening here. No. I'm doing a lot of jump cuts, so I mean, I, I clearly explored this town a little bit longer. But um, we're trying. We're starting to see the main elements of the storytelling here in the game. You're gonna see Locke is now gonna be sad here um, and it, it slowly gets revealed that this is how um, you know where his journey comes from where his desire to save the world kind of comes from it, it comes from losing this person and then moving forward without her and uh, you know you kind of see that in these flashbacks which um, and it's pretty pretty simple right like you're gonna see right right now um, that's pretty quick, but you're also gonna see family. You know the woman's family clearly did not like him after this happened, um, which makes sense. You're gonna see he wants to help her, but he's not allowed to. And all of these elements turn this guy into like a tragic hero, um, where you know we now understand more about him as gamers, like as we're playing through his life and his story. And as we use him in our video game, we now have a better understanding of kind of what his motivation is. Um, and that changes the way you, I don't think it changes the way you play, but I think it changes the way you feel. Um, I think it changes the way you feel a game when you're in, immersed in these characters and you're engrossed in their story. And I think it's important um, that that's where the emotional connection comes um, when, you, when you're playing video games. Uh, it doesn't just come from you know, smashing buttons. Although some, some games are good, and I'm not downing any games that where all you do is smash buttons. I'm saying that when you have a story as deep as this one, and you see all the elements of it, and you see here, this woman forgets him, even though he loves her. Um, it kind of gives you uh, a better sense of who you're playing and who you're portraying. So I'll let it go, come back and, and, uh, uh, and so just get, get, keep all that in mind as, as we're, we're playing this game. <clears throat> Rachel will be better off without you hanging around, Marco. You're going to have to make a new start of it. With you here, can shake, she can't even do that. So I, I decided to do a minimal, like, overlay, and I think I like this better. The other stuff's cool, the like, you know, logos and stuff, but like, it's not. It's up to me. It's it was distracting from some of the gameplay. So, um, so I'm gonna just like try to just do this very simple layout. Um, for the, you know, for the time being. God, another awesome soundtrack, bro. A year went by when I finally returned. I found out she'd been killed in the Imperial attack. There is the motivation. So as you hear there, I, I might have jumped the gun a little bit earlier talking about the motivation. However... Um, you know, his motivation for being an adventurer, it was Rachel, and then when he found out the Imperial attack, that kind of egged him on even further to be part of this resistance unit and, and force that's trying to take down the Empire. That's the thing, you have to remember the, the story, right? There, there's still an Empire to, to overtake, 
So, um, so yeah, so that was, uh, you know, it, they mentioned the, um, her, Rachel's death because of the empire, and that kind of gives you, an, again, another sense of who this person is and why he's fighting um, for what he, what he, you know, what he believes in here. Rachel, I remember returning just before she passed away. If a man named Marco returns, please tell him that I love him. Oh, look at that. Mm, mm, mm. What? An in? We don't need an in, right? Yeah, just save it. Okay, what's up here? Nothing? Best stay away from that house on the eastern end of town. Crazy old coot sits in there, mashing up smelly old herbs. <coughs> I haven't heard you got a ghost in the basement. <coughs> Here we go. Boop, boop. By the way, really quick, we're about to, when we go back into the house, that soundtrack is probably one of the most fun soundtracks I've ever had, ever heard in any game, ever. It's just so much fun. <laughs> so enjoy it for a little bit while we learn more. Oh, here we go. Oh, Marco, it's been a while, ages even. Oh, that worry now, worry not, worry now. Your treasure is quite safe. Hee 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 hee. Pum pum. It's a good thing I just happened to finish this herbal concoction back then. Now she'll never age a day. I had to use my herbs, I did. Couldn't very well refuse with you begging me like that. What is happening? That's crazy. Oh my god, I had her. Oof. It's kind of morbid, dude. You're sure this stuff will work? Of course, of course. The love of your life will sleep here just like this forever. And never and ever. Hee 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 hee. Dude, that's kind of creepy. Creepy magic you got going on there. If there were a way to, call her spirit back. A way to call her back, eh? You mean like that legendary treasure, he 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 he. Oh yes, I suppose if you had that, you might be able to bring her around. He 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 he. I failed her. I want to point you to one last thing before I let you go for the day. Watch this right here. Coming, there it is. Celis taking one last look at what's going on. There's a little bit of a foreshadowing of what's happening for the rest of the game. So that was pretty interesting. And um, again, one more best soundtrack ever is coming right now. Is this the exit? Yes, yeah, let's see. Go to the inn or the pub first. I love that music, dude. Does that mean the ninja's here? <laughs> So as you can see, one last meeting with Shadow Art Ninja. Uh, thanks for joining me. I hope you like this new format. I enjoyed it. I liked watching it again and kind of providing commentary. So have a good day. Thanks so much and happy gaming.